In this video, we'll pick up where we left off with the publish subscribe pickup service and handle not just the arrival time, but now the pickup and drop off events. Because we don't have live cars to know when the pickup is finished or the drop off is done, we're going to need to simulate this. So I'm going to simulate polling a server using our simulation service. So first I'll add the methods to call our simulation service inside our car service. And the implementation in the simulation service is going to be very simple. We're just going to have a timer that expires after one second. So it's behaving as if it's the web server and we asked it for when this rider has finished and we receive a response after one second saying it's finished. This is something that could be implemented on a server using long polling or some type of web sockets. So now the question is when should we start polling for these events? And that's going to occur after the updates have finished for the car. So I'm going to pass a callback to my update car method in the pickup car component that after it's completed the path in the else statement, it's going to call our callback. So now I just need to pass in the callback. So to check if we've been picked up yet, we'll do that in the request car method when it calls to update the car. And by using an arrow function, we'll be able to pass in a class method. So I'll call that method check for rider pickup. And this method is going to call our car service poll for rider pickup. And then listen for that completion. And then it will emit the pickup event in our pickup publish subscribe service which we'll then be able to listen to in other parts of our application. So now returning to our home page, I'm going to add a case for the event of when we're picked up. And I'll create a method for that called rider picked up. which is going to toggle an instance variable called isRiderPickedUp to true. And we'll be able to use this variable in our homepage template to determine when to ask the user for a destination. So once we've been picked up, we'll ask the user where he wants to go. So I'm going to create a component that's going to hold that information and I'll call it destination address. And I'll put this component in our home page at the top of our map. And it'll be hidden if is writer picked up as false, but I'll leave it as true for now so that we can see it as we're developing. And it's going to output an event when a new destination has been entered. And we'll consume that event on our home page. And for now, we'll set it as a class variable called destination. Now let's return to our destination address component and implement the input of our destination. So to start with, I'll add the output event emitter that is going to be sending our destination to the home page. And then I'll add in the form where the user will enter the destination. And to do this, I'll use the ion components to create an input box and a floating label. So now let's add two way data binding to our input box using ng model. And we'll use a class variable name of entered address. And we'll add an ng submit event to our form where we'll be able to pass the entered address to our output event of this component. But first, let's stylize our component. 
So I want to position it above the map. So I'm going to use position absolute with the top of zero and a width of 100%. I'll give it a slight opacity so we can see the map underneath it. And I'll add this style sheet to our list of style sheets to be pre-compiled for our app. And now I'm going to import our destination address component in our home page and I'll add it as one of the directives for our template. And finally I'll set is writer picked up back to false so it is hidden until the writer is picked up. And now we can test this out in our app. When the pickup car arrives at the pickup marker, the destination field shows at the top of the map. And in the next video, we'll show how we'll use the Google Maps API to generate a list of possible destinations based on the text input.